Today's a member's business debate on motion number 12759 in the name of David Torrance on congratulations to Kinghorn Lifeboat Station on its 50th anniversary. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, but I would invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And without further ado, I call on Mr Torrance to open the debate. Seven minutes or thereby, Mr Torrance, please. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to welcome to a public gallery today from Kinghorn Lifeboat Station, Al Makarevi, Operations Manager, Joanne Wibberley, Helm, Leanne Fisher, Helm, Elizabeth Davison, Deputy Launching Authority, Charles Tillich, MBE, former Operations Manager, who has served for over 40 years, and Suzanne Gilfeller, Treasurer and Kinghorn Community Council. Founded in 1824, the RNLI has a long, fascinating life-saving history, and one of which we should be justifiably proud. The main purpose of the RNLI is to save lives at the sea by providing on-call 24-hour lifeboat search and rescue service and a seasonal lifeguard service, with the ultimate vision of preventing loss of life at sea. The first inshore lifeboat station in Scotland was established in Broad Ferry in 1840, 175 years ago. The inshore rescue boat at Kinghorn was formally established on June 26, 1965, and was very soon in action on June 27, a memorable day in many respects, and one in which the legendary Jim Clark won the French Grand Prix. The lifeboat was called out. A catamaran with three crew found itself in difficulty passing close to Unskeef Island, and the station's first service call took place. The rescue boat was manned by two men, one of whom was George Tullock the older brother of Charles Tullock, who is in the gallery today, and who helped launch the rescue boat. And coincidentally, one of the men they set out to rescue that day on the catamaran was Charles's twin brother, Gordon. Thankfully, the incident was resolved and successfully for all concerned. Since its inception 50 years ago, Kinghorn Lifeboat Station has played a vital role in helping those in difficulty in surrounding waters. The housing of a new craft was initially in a wooden garage constructed on common ground behind what is now a sailing club. It is still there today and continues to be painted in the dark blue colour of a RNLI. Although most inshore boats were expected to have an operating area of a few miles, in those days Kinghorn covered most of the four. Manned as it is today by volunteers, conditions 50 years ago were less than favourable for a brave man called out to help those in distress. Initially they went out in plastic trousers and plastic smocks, as well as their Copec filled life jackets supplemented by old wool jerseys and woolly hats provided by the men themselves. Not really adequate protection for getting into a boat or a stormy seas they often face when called out. The first boats, although very manoeuvrable, had little or no keel, resulting in an uncomfortable and awful painful ride for the volunteers already soaked from launching the vessel. To add to the difficulties they faced in early days, the rescue's boats did not have a radio, and attempts to recall the boat in severe weather conditions through the use of flashing iodus lamps, often unsuccessful. This was problematic for many years to come, and various alternatives were tried, including firing a green flare and firing another maroon one. When on exercise, the crew always remained in sight of Kinghorn Beach, because a white sheet would be hung out of a second-story window if it were needed to come ashore and be tasked to a rescue. Thankfully, more modern and up-to-date equipment makes it easier and safer for the crews when participating in exercises or helping those in distress. One of my favourite stories is that of the time the inshore rescue boat set off from Kinghorn to aid in the rescue of a stricken dinghy near Kirkcaldy, not by sea, but by road towed by a crew member's Land Rover. A police panda car was sent to a promenade in Kirkcaldy to escort the vehicle, but a crew member wasn't impressed with the progress being made, and all of a sudden the lifeboat overtook the police car, much to the concern of the other crew members. Lifeboat stations such as that King at Kinghorn play a vital part in coastal communities in protecting these people in the area who, make up, use, who use the sea for fishing or leisure activities, as well as helping those using the sea passing who find themselves in trouble. I personally have cause to be thankful to them, as in the 80s my brother found himself in difficulty by sea in Kinghorn and was grateful for assistance relieved by Kinghorn Lifeboat Station. They are also committed to managing their impact on the environment and can be called upon to help protect marine life. One such incident occurred when Aaron Makarevi, the current operations manager, was part of an operation to assist marine biologists. Having the sad task of towing the body of a beaked whale off the sand at Petakur Beach, they proceeded to drum sands on the south side of Forth, 
where we were instrumental in rescuing a dolphin and taking it into deep waters of Fish Combe and happily watched it head down the river to freedom. The RNLI and indeed Kinghorn Lifeboat Station depend on volunteer crews who are unpaired and prepared to put their own lives at risk to save others. This requires skill, courage and time. They are also called 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, often putting out to sea in total darkness and terrifying conditions. Although initially only male crews, there have been females in Kinghorn Lifeboat Station since the mid-90s, three of whom are also in the gallery today. Women have demonstrated their ability to work alongside their male colleagues naturally and effortlessly, providing equal to any task assigned to them, and in some instances proving to be far better equipped to deal with some situations than their male counterparts. In order for men and women to do their job effectively, however, training and equipment is required on top of the annual run running costs of an inshore lifeboat station like Kinghorn, which amounts to 85,000 a year. This can only be sustained through the generosity of the public and su support provided by them, through a variety of fundraising events within the community. £20 can keep a lifeboat running at full speed for 10 minutes. Kinghorn RNLI station has close links with the local community and in holding fundraising events in this 50th anniversary year, they are putting the boat out with a year of events with a golden theme. They began the year with a golden loony duke. Around 80 people took part and resulted in £620 being donated on the day of the event with further sponsorship expected to boost the total. Other fundraising events have included volunteers swimming the fourth to raise funds, venturing out of a boathouse at Stormy Stan, making pancakes and even being able to metamorphose into a witch for a spooky walk. In this their 50th anniversary year, I commend Kinghorn Lifeboat Station and all those who have given their time to serve as volunteer crew members, or in another capacity, and those who have generously supported them in whatever way they could. The dedication of those who have served as crew members and those who have supported them has enabled the station to complete nearly 1,300 call-outs over the past 50 years and has saved around 389 lives. In conclusion, presiding officer, in congratulation of Kinghorn Lifeboat Station on its 50th anniversary, I would like to reiterate that this is an organisation which truly serves the community and the surrounding area in so many different ways, and indeed is deserving of the tremendous support it has received over the years from the people of Kinghorn. I applaud not only the members of the station, but the people of Kinghorn for their efforts and wish them well for the future. Many thanks. I now call on Claire Baker to be followed by Roderick Campbell. Four minutes thereby, please. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Um, I would first like to thank David Torrance for securing the time this afternoon to have this debate. Um, debates which congratulate and acknowledge the immense contribution that local organisations and volunteers make to our communities are always welcome. And I would also like to welcome our visitors from Kinghorn to the gallery. It is right that the Parliament, along amongst all the political debates that we have, has the time to come together and welcome the achievements of people and organisations in our regions. And Kinghorn Lifeboat Station deserves this recognition. Established in 1965, for 50 years it has been looking after and serving our coastline. Its responsibility stretches from Ely to North Berwick and includes the Force Bridges. It is amazing and reveals such dedication that these lifeboat stations are run by volunteers and the funding is done by raising money through the RN, sorry, RNLI. As a fifer who goes to local events, you will always find the RNLI stall promoting their cause and raising money. I think at the last event I came away with a dolphin bracelet. That wasn't for me, I have to say. Um, I am also a fifer who over the years has spent many sunny days on Kinghorn Beach and watching for activity from the lifeboat station is one of the ways to pass the time. Um, Fife has a busy coastline. We have commercial activity and leisure activity in our seas. And as I drove home last night from a school concert in Aber Hill Primary School, um, home to Burnt Island, there is so much to see in the drive along the coast, from industrial platforms, cruise ships, sailing boats. The lifeboat station supports and protects all these activities. It was interesting to look at the station's history and see that when they were established in 1965, it was partly in response to growing leisure activity in the seas. Um, RNLI has recently launched the Respect the Water campaign, which focuses on staying safe when enjoying water sports and waterside activities such as kite surfing, kayaking, beach visits and sailing. 
The sea is to be enjoyed, but we all have a responsibility to take care of ourselves and others. The Lifeboat Station provides valuable assistance to the Coast Guard Agency, which depends on this service. It is a huge achievement to maintain a highly trained and dedicated crew, all volunteers who are available and ready 24 hours a day, every single day of the year. And for the volunteers at Kinghorn and around the country, we should offer our thanks. These highly skilled volunteer crews demonstrate courage and commitment, as well as giving their time. They are prepared to go out at sea in terrible conditions, often in the middle of the night, when the call for assistance comes. I would also like to thank the volunteers who run the organisation and do all the fundraising. Um, David Torrance has outlined the range of fundraising activity they do in Kinghorn, attractions which bring in people from all over Fife, the Halloween walks and the Looney Duke being two of the highlights. Fundraising can be difficult, but the strengthening links between the lifeboat station and the community helps to support this activity. And I welcome all the Golden Anniversary events being held this year, and I wish them much success. Earlier this year, the Lifeboat Station Photography Project started with support from RNLI. Uh, photographer Jack Lowe aims to visit every lifeboat station in Britain and Ireland and document each station using Victorian photography methods. This will culminate in an exhibition where each glass plate is hung geographically around a huge room, which will give a vision of the entire coastline of the British Isles depicted through lifeboat stations. If this is completed, it will give a sense of history and demonstrate their dedication to country and community. And presiding officer for Kinghorn, this is a time of celebration. 50 years of service is an achievement to be honoured. And I want to give thanks, I'm sure along with every member in this parliament, for the immense work that our lifeboat station does 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Many thanks. Now call on Roderick Campbell to be followed by Liz Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It's a privilege to have the opportunity to speak on the subject of Kinghorn Lifeboat Station, and I commend David Torrance for bringing this subject to the Chamber today. As with all emergency services, the job that the Royal, Naval, the Royal National Lifeboat Institution do is too easily taken for granted, and so an occasion such as this is a valuable opportunity to remind ourselves of the life-saving service that they provide. The fact that the RNLI is entirely composed of volunteers further underlines the sacrifice that they make and that this is on a 365 days a year, 24-7 basis, makes this all the more commendable. The RNLI, which is worth reminding ourselves, is in fact a charity with its headquarters and college at Poole in Dorset, has a network of stations throughout the UK that function purely as a result of the commitment of their volunteer crews. This network consists of 236 lifeboat stations, one of which is Kinghorn, based on the coast of Fife, which covers an extensive area along the Firth of Forth from Ely in my own constituency to North Berwick. For those not well acquainted with the sea, this is an environment that must not be underestimated, but so often is, that can turn very quickly and unexpectedly from a serene, flat, calm setting to an extremely hostile one in a very short space of time. The sea is a force to be reckoned with, and anyone that does not take heed of this literally throws the dice every time they embark on its surface. It is in this inherently dangerous and changeable arena that crews, crews so often find themselves being called upon to operate. They have to save lives at sea, the most recent of which for Kinghorn Life State, Lifeboat Station was a call on Wednesday the 17th of June this year. It's a much more difficult task since the UK government's decision to close the Fife Coast Guard station in 2012, causing remaining stations to have to cover a much larger area than before. The crew of King Corn has been in place since 1965, as has been mentioned, and has made progress in obtaining better craft to their current model of the Atlantic 85-class RNLI lifeboat. This rigid inflatable boat is 8.3 metres long and can reach speeds of up to 35 knots in order to reach those in peril at sea. This can be achieved in sea conditions up to those associated with onshore winds of 4.7. Valued at 185,000, it's no mean feat that this has been provided as a direct result of fundraising by devoted crews and RNLI members across the country. If that was not enough, the lifeboat must be launched from its own drive-on, drive-off trailer, otherwise known as Dodo, that is moved by a launching tractor. Valued at £120,000, it allows the crew to move the boat from the station situated at the west end of Kinghorn Beach into the sea after crossing some distance across the beach, depending on the tide. I look forward to catching this on the Fountain Bridge show on STV in the coming weeks, as I understand some filming took place recently. 
The station has been in its current form since 1995 and can be accessed via the promenade to the east or a set of stairs down the hill to the west. Its setting within the local community is wholly appropriate, given the incredible relentless support that is received from there. Being a crew member of the RNLI does not stop at performing rescues, although at 1,300 call-outs since the station was established, this is clearly a huge achievement, saving around 389 lives. But fundraising is an essential part of the crew's duty, without which the RNLI would simply cease to exist. And therefore, I'm pleased to, kind of pro to, to publicize the upcoming events, including the open day to be held on the 11th of July this year to celebrate the 50th anniversary. This is on top of five other published events earlier this year. The fact that these events occur at all is down to the commitment of nine members of the committee, headed up by the President, Shiona Baxter. I'd like to commend the committee for their hard work. The nature of these endeavours mean they often go unseen, however, they must not go unrecognised. I'm sure that all members would join with me in congratulating Kinghorn Lifeboat Station crew, the Kinghorn community and the RNLI in their work, and all that goes with it is a huge contribution to Fife and all persons that rely on them to allow them to take to the sea, with the confidence that there is a professional volunteer force ready to, re to react should the need arise. Thank you. Thank you. Now Colin Liz Smith to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Uh, thank you. Uh, could I uh, thank David Torrance for presenting this motion uh, to Parliament and uh, may I also congratulate Kinghorn Lifeboat Station and wish it uh, a very happy 50th golden anniversary as it was. Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, there are certain charities which are held in particularly high public esteem and I have no doubt whatsoever that the RNLI Lifeboats is one of them. Indeed, the lifeboats and their stations are, to me, iconic symbols of the very best in public service, and Kinghorn uh, is exactly that. The station has, of course, had many remarkable stories. Uh, David Torrance uh, mentioned the station's first call-out, uh, which I think was, did you say, 24 hours uh, within its founding to rescue the pilots uh, of a catamaran whose mast had snapped, and so desperate were they to uh, avoid being uh, Saved by the volunteers, they, they uh, really tried very hard to beat them off with their paddles, if I heard you correctly. But obviously there have been other instances. I think somebody made a very quick exit from uh, a, a special wedding with local people. And obviously you had the Queen's Baton in the lead-up uh, to the Commonwealth Games. As uh, I hasten to add, a very young child, uh, I have a very vague memory of my father, who was a very proud fifer, taking me to see the new uh, Kinghorn lifeboat station in 1965, uh, not long after the uh, new fourth road bridge was opened in the previous September. My, my mother still recalls my father being extremely impressed by what he saw. Uh, as David Torrance has made clear, lifeboats uh, have been launched from the station more than a thousand uh, times, and they've obviously saved the lives of uh, just under 400 uh, people, as the motion states. I think one of the uh, most interesting aspects for me is the social history as well as the maritime history, and clearly the Tullock family is best placed to know exactly what has been involved. They have been quite extraordinary in their support. Uh, and I think in, in the interview with uh, Fife today in April, um, Charlie commented on how much of the process of a call-out and the boat itself have changed over the years. Um, he describes it about the first lifeboat arriving in Kinghorn was actually launched uh, by hand and you had to get wet whilst doing so, not like the current boat where we have dry suits, gloves and even seats in the boat. Uh, I believe uh, Charlie Tullock exemplifies what I said about uh, the uh, iconic symbol of the best public service and well deserved of his uh, honour in that respect and I know everybody in the chamber uh, will support that. Can I also... Uh, say to Claire Baker that I entirely agree with her comments about the fundraising efforts of all those who have been connected to the station and the local community. In the past, volunteers have obviously swum the fourth. They've uh, had all kinds of fundraising events, gathered donations at the door. Um, and, I, and I think just the way in which that has taken place shows uh, the, the love and affection uh, for the station. To put all the donations in context, uh, uh, David Torrance said that £20 can keep a lifeboat running for 10 minutes at full tilt uh, or purchase a first aid trauma kit that could save someone's lives. And I think that puts it very much in perspective. So, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, I don't really think we can praise them uh, high enough for all that they have done. They are magnificent and uh, they provide that security and feeling of uh, safety to 
many people who take to the seas, but they are part of the intrinsic value of the community, and for that alone, I think they deserve all the praise that we can lay on them. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call on Stuart Stevenson, after which I move to close the speech to the Minister. Uh, let me start, uh, as I properly should, in congratulating David Torrance in uh, bringing this subject uh, to Parliament's attention, giving us the opportunity to debate it. Uh, for me, of course, the lifeboats are a very important part of my constituency. We have four lifeboat stations at Bucky, at Macduff, at Fraserburgh and Peterhead, because, of course, we are essentially a coastal constituency. And I know how much uh, my constituents value having the lifeboats, the security of knowing that there is uh, someone on standby who knows what they're doing and has the equipment to do it. So hearing of what goes on in Kinghorn, uh, it's no surprise to find the esteem that the lifeboat service is held in Kinghorn. Now, Kinghorn, of course, uh, has had many maritime connections uh, from the death of Alexander III in uh, 1286, uh, which meant that the Maid of Norway became uh, the Queen of Scotland at the age of three years and then drowned off St Margaret's Hope uh, in 1290 and caused the wars of independence that uh, underpin much uh, of the history of Scotland of those times and resonates to today. So Kinghorn has a history uh, around the sea and a history on the lifeboat. Now, I, I was interested to read about uh, the early experience of the lifeboat there in, in 1965 rescuing uh, leisure sailors, or perhaps not, because they didn't want to be. Uh, and I myself used to do a lot of dinghy sailing. I'm, I'm just not quite sure I would be out at Kinghorn on that particular day, but I'd love to go back and look at my records and find that case. Pretty confident it's it's actually uh, not uh, not 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 the case. Now, of course, the lifeboats that we have today in Kinghorn and elsewhere are quite high tech, and we want to go back to what the first rescue boats were. They were actually cobbles with a couple of guys rowing them, and somebody uh, at, in 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 the stern steering the boat towards uh, the vessel in distress. So we've made a lot of progress in professionalising and improving uh, the quality of support that we have. Uh, Claire Baker uh, mentioned the Respect for the Water campaign. And it's as well to remind ourselves that the sea is a cruel mistress and can be very dangerous. Um, I don't know how many of us are aware that one cubic metre of water, you know, this amount, weighs a tonne. So when water is coming in waves, this is not a trivial matter. It's not like the water that uh, we're in the bath and we feel it's comfortable and warm and surrounding us. Once we're out at sea, water can be one of the most dangerous uh, uh, prospects that any fisherman in my constituency, leisure yachts uh, in uh, Kinghorn, or indeed aviators who've taken off uh, from uh, the airport at Edinburgh and have come to grief uh, in, the, in, in the fourth, as was the case. And I may say on one particular occasion, and I'm just slightly uncertain whether it was the Anstruther boat or the Kinghorn boat, even going to the rescue of the pirate ship Comet, uh, who was broadcasting Radio Scotland between 1966 and 1967 uh, off the Bell Rock on one occasion uh, when the anchors were drifting uh, the lifeboat had to go out and help that. So there is a wide range of activities uh, that the lifeboats uh, get involved in. I close by just leaving you with a little humorous remark that one of my constituents made about his service on the lifeboat uh, and the conditions that he often experienced when he is there. Uh, Presiding officer, if I may uh, put it in this term, he said it's the best cure for constipation he's ever met. <laughs> Thank you. Just enough information there. Now call on the Minister uh, to close the debate on behalf of the Government. Minister, seven minutes are thereby, please. Thank you, President Officer. And like all the members, I'm delighted that we have the opportunity to commend the Kinghorn Lifeboat Station and its volunteer crews for all the valuable work they do in saving lives along both sides of the fourth. The crews have given their time, their effort to self serve all of those using the waters in the surrounding area for 50 years now. And it is a great pleasure for me to thank the many people who have made such an important contribution to Kinghorn and the surrounding area and to extend those thanks to, to the RNLI and their lifeboat crews across Scotland. 
Kinghorn Lifeboat Station, as we've heard, is an RNLI-funded and operated rescue station on the coast of Fife, situated three miles from Kirkcaldy and across the fourth estuary from Edinburgh, my, the city of which uh, I am proud to, to represent a part. They're available and ready 24 hours a day, every single day of the year, to assist the MCA in effecting rescues between Ely Ness, Aberladdy to the east, and Inchcombe, Granton to the west. The Kinghorn Lifeboat, as we've heard, was first launched in 1965. And as David Torrance pointed out, just a very short time after it was instituted, it was called to its first use. Since then, it's been launched over a thousand times in the 50 years to save lives at sea and along the coastline. The RNLI's volunteers and staff strive for excellence. They're selfless, willing to put requirements of others before their own needs of the team before the individual. They're dependable, always available, committed to doing their part in saving lives with professionalism and expertise. They're trustworthy, responsible, accountable and efficient in the use of the donations entrusted to the RNLI by their supporters. They're also courageous because they're prepared to achieve those aims in changing and challenging environments that I think most of us would shrink back from. And the RNLI has been an essential part of our lives as a country now for nearly 200 years. The statistics speak for themselves. In 2013, there were 8,304 launches across the UK. That's an average of 23 a day. And more importantly, a total of 8,384 people were rescued during the same period. That's also an average of 23 people rescued every day. Closer to home, the Kinghorn lifeboat regularly takes part in rescues along our coast and, as has been said, was launched as recently as the 17th of June. And, as with the all lifeboats, the crews are all volunteers. The particular expertise is in the preservation of life at sea and on the water through prevention and rescue. It's part of a proud tradition of saving lives spanning nearly two centuries. Available 24-7, whatever the weather, to rescue those who need help. And while the volunteer crews are the backbone of the lifeboat service, physically going out there, saving the lives at sea, it takes many more volunteers to run a lifeboat station effectively. And we should recognise all of them. The lifeboat operations manager, who's in charge of authorising launches and managing the station day to day, the lifeboat management group, also, again, volunteers representing the station in the local community. And, of course, the volunteers who also lead the fundraising efforts that support the lifeboat's valuable work. The RNLI are very clear and always have been that they do not seek funding from central government. And I'm glad to welcome a, such a range of people who have participated in all of these ways here to Parliament. And I have been impressed by the range of fundraising activity that I have seen undertaken on behalf of the Kinghorn lifeboat, from the spooky walks to the Looney Duke. But I do want to assure the uh, MSP for Kirkcaldy, my honourable colleague, that if he was to invite the minister to take part in the latter event, I would have to be finding something else to do that evening. I think that the level of support, the level of activity shows the importance of the lifeboat, though, not just as a service, as you might think, but as a cherished, indispensable part of the community as a whole. And the volunteers who run lifeboat stations and crew lifeboats are just a small part of the huge range of formal and informal volunteering which goes on across Scotland throughout the year. Over a million people volunteer in Scotland each year in a wide range of circumstances, from on our seas to in our care homes. And the Scottish Government recognises the contribution our volunteers make to the lives of individuals and communities across Scotland. Volunteers of all ages are what makes our society strong. They're vital to the success of this country and often play a major part in building the confidence of those who feel marginalised in our society, giving them an outlet to realise their potential, develop their talents and skills and to find new ways to lead healthy, fulfilled lives and then, indeed, with the economic dimension of being able to become more economically 
active. There is no doubt that volunteering helps individuals, organisations and communities. And we are proud that Scotland has so many people willing to give their time and effort to strengthen their communities and help those less fortunate themselves, indeed, even at the risk of their own lives. Their involvement reflects a community spirit of active, responsible citizenship that we should all aspire to. And we're well-renowned as a country for a community spirit where so many are making a difference in their own communities, but without any fanfare, doing what they believe in, without any expectation of a great reward, unsung heroes and heroines. And today, I think it is fitting that we take a moment to recognise them. What motivates individuals to, uh, to get involved will vary, but what is impressive is the determination to make a difference and what they achieve with the skills and experience they bring to bear. I'm proud that Scotland has so many people who care and who are willing to give their own time and effort. So well done to the Kinghorn Lifeboat crews who have done so much over the last 50 years since the Kinghorn Lifeboat was first launched. Thank you to all of them. This government recognises the vital, often dangerous role you play in serving those who use the waters in Kinghorn and the surrounding area and the wider role of the RNLI throughout Scotland. David Torrance cited 389 people saved by the Kinghorn lifeboat. That is 389 people whose lives went on, who could raise families, be with friends and continue to be loved rather than mourned. There are no words from me that could ever carry more weight than the simple truth of all those lives touched by Kinghorn Lifeboat's work. Many thanks. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.